Now recording. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the South Sacramento Florin Community Air Protection Program Steering Committee meeting. Um, we are going to be recording this, uh, this meeting tonight, and we will be po posting it onto our Community Air Protection website. With that, I am going to turn over to our co-lead, um, Patricia Shelby, to do a welcome. Hello, everyone. How are you tonight? Um, please forgive me if it sounds like I'm um, having a little bit of difficulty. I have <laughs> part of my face numb and a swollen lip because I went to the dentist this afternoon. Um, but I think most of you can understand what I'm saying when I'm trying to articulate. Um, we will uh, go ahead and start the meeting. And we have a new member, but I don't know that he has been able to get the link to work. We've had some technical difficulties tonight. Have you, uh, let me check with, uh, Marina or Janice, have you seen our new member? Uh, I do not see him signed on yet. Okay. All right. So with that, we'll go ahead and move forward. I know some members are on the phone because of their technical difficulties and others have gotten their videos to work. Welcome to you all. Um, and I hope that you are arriving here uh, healthy and um, on your way to um, being able to have more freedom because we are finally getting into the uh, ability to get our vaccines if we cho so choose and be able to move in the community more, which gives us uh, new opportunities uh, for outreach in the future. All right, so um, Janice, we have a few administrative items. Yes, uh, let's start with a roll call. Okay. All right. The first uh, going through uh, Bill Nelton is at City uh, Hall uh, testifying and he will join us as soon as he's able to free himself from that. So he's not here. Um, Gary Johansson. Yes. Uh, Bishop Chris Baker. Here. Thank you. Rhonda Henderson. Rhonda, is your sound on? She, she was here a short time ago. Let's come back. John Rice, are you present? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Vincent Valdez, are you present? Here. Ian Chan, are you present? I'm present. Jesus Cervantes, are you present? Here, present. All right. Peter Hong, are you present? All right, so I do see that we have a quorum. We are missing two members at this time and our new member who is joining us has not been able to uh, get his link yet. All right, so Janice, if you will please introduce the um, Air District and CARB. Okay, uh, first, my name is uh, Janice Schneider. I'm with the Sacramento Air. District. Um, the first person is gonna be Mark Ludsenheiser. Here, thank you. Uh, Jaime Lima. I am here. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Rafe Porter. Here. David Yang. Here. Marina Franceschi. Hello, I'm here. Uh, and then I will do a roll call for CARB staff, Karen Buckley. Here. Hi, everybody. Uh, Eric Bissinger. Hello. And then we have our facilitator. Ariel Ambrister. Hi, everyone. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, are we ready for me to review the agenda then? Great. Okay. So I think if our new member is able to join, we'll have an opportunity for him to introduce himself and for the steering committee members to introduce themselves to him. And other than that, we have administrative items. And other than that, we have administrative items. And I think it might be helpful if more people closed their sound because I'm hearing an echo, so other people may be hearing that. 
Um, so then we'll have a brief district update. The outreach subgroup will report back. And then there's a recap discussion on land use and air quality impacts. And then the group will discuss new business and future agenda topics and then public comments. And we're adjourning the public com uh, portion of the meeting early because we will have a collaborative training um, for steering committee members in the latter half of the meeting. And then our code of conduct. If we have a slide for that, next slide. Ah, I'll just briefly go over the code of conduct then before we go to logistics. So uh, this is from the steering committee's new code of conduct under its new charter. Uh, members will treat everyone with courtesy and respect. We avoid uh, personally attacking or demeaning anyone or interrupting others who have the floor. Avoid disruptive um, behavior or delaying the meeting and strive to be fair and unbiased towards each other and the public and the district value each other's time and respect each other's opportunity to speak, strive to reach consensus, but agree to disagree if need be, listen courteously and attentively to the public, and then strive to hold each other accountable to the code of conduct. And then with that, I will uh, shift over to Marina Franceschi to go over logistics. Hello, yes, so I'll go over some logistics for us tonight. Um, we have staff available to help you. If you have any technology issues, please send an email to ab617clerk at airquality.org um, and someone will contact you. You can also message the host or the co-host in the message box if you're having any technical trouble. Um, for agenda items that have steering committee discussion, the co-leads will announce the format of the discussion. So if it's round robin, the co-leads will call upon each member one by one to speak. And then after each member has spoken, you're welcome to please raise your virtual hand if you have any additional comments. Um, for the public comment period and any discussion that's not round robin, same thing. If you'd like to speak, please just raise your virtual hand. In order to do so, it'll depend on the version of Zoom that you're using. If you're on the computer and you have an older version of Zoom, you can click on the participant icon at the bottom and you should get a panel of all the participants. At the bottom of the panel, there should be a raise hand button. If you have the newer version of Zoom, you can click reactions on the bottom right and you can select raise hand and then next to your name, you'll see a little virtual hand pop up and you'll know that it worked. If you're calling in on the phone, you can press star nine and you'll hear an automatic voice saying that your hand is raised. Uh, when you're called upon, please unmute yourself if you're on the computer. Um, you can press your microphone icon on the lower left, and if you're on the phone, just press star six. If you're using both the computer and telephone, then you might have to unmute yourself on both. Uh, you can also email any comments to that same email, ab617clerk at airquality.org during the public comment period, and we'll read it aloud to the committee. And as a reminder for our steering committee members, um, you are not required to have your camera turned on if you have any privacy concerns about your home being viewed publicly, um, of course, it's nice to be able to see each other, especially in these online meetings, but they are recorded and posted on the district's YouTube channel. So if you have any concerns about that, you are not obligated. And that concludes all of our logistics. So I'll pass it to the colleagues. Okay, back to Pat. And I think we have a uh, meeting Trans notes. Yeah, the transition. Um excuse me, in your packet, you should have received your um, overview and meeting takeaways. It is not a full set of meeting notes because we are recording those meetings, but you should see that for your March 23rd meeting 25. Do I have a motion for approval? And remember, yeah. I cannot hear you unless you turn your sound on. <laughs> I make, a I make a motion for approval. Thank you, um, Stephanie Williams. Motion, do I have a second? I have a second from John Rice. Thank you, John Rice. Uh, it has been moved and seconded. We will adopt those uh, minutes. Pat, uh, this is uh, Steve Blanton. I just had a question. Since this is my first meeting, would it be appropriate for me ah, to explain? There you are, Steve. We were we were looking for you. You found me. Okay, then, then we're just going to back up just a little bit. 
Steve Blanton, folks, is our newest member, and he is a representative, as we discussed in our prior meeting, from Power in Alliance. Steve, mm -hmm. I would like you to take a moment, and thank you for moving the screen um, so that we can be able to see each other. Um, Steve, what I want to share with you is that we've been having some technical difficulty tonight, and some people are able to get their uh, videos working and others have been have to stay on the phone. So if you would introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little something and we'll come back. Okay. Uh, yeah, happy to. Um, yeah, as Pat indicated, my name is Steve Blanton. I'm the executive director of the Power and Alliance. So I'm, I'm pleased to be here and uh, look forward to working uh, with all of you. A uh, little bit um, about me. I, um, I originally come from the Bay Area, uh, Los Gatos in particular. I grew up there. Uh, I was on the town council there for, for 12 years. I joked with Pat, I think, before that I tried to get time off for good behavior, but uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't give it to me. I had to do the whole 12 years. Uh, so I was a council member, uh, vice mayor and mayor. Uh, I did from time to time attend Bay Area air quality uh, uh, meetings, so I'm, I'm familiar with the issue, and it's a you know it's it's an issue that's important to me personally. So um, I'm I'm pleased to be here, and and uh, again look forward to working with all of you. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, Vincent. I see you raise your hand. I want to take the opportunity for each member to introduce themselves to you. Um, if you note behind our names, uh, Rhonda's missing hers. I think I'm not sure about Chris's. SC is uh, the letters behind our names that indicate that we are steering committee member uh, members. Um, Vincent, your, your hand is up. Was that intentional? Yes, uh, when we were talking about reviewing the minutes and then uh, they are uh, on a video, I just had a question. Has anybody re watched the video? I watched a portion of the video. So my question is, are we effectively effectively communicating the minutes to everybody or just offering a video? That's my uh, so, so I'll go ahead and uh, at least provide an answer and you guys can decide if it's a, a, a satisfactory answer or not, Vincent. Um, the notes we now provide are really just a very high level summary. Um, since we are recording the meetings in their entirety, they are the official documentation for it and we are saving those. Normally the purpose of minutes is to record and document. And since we have a, an actual video, there's no question then in terms of missing or skipping anything. And the others just intend to be a high level snapshot. So I see that Steve Blanton has his hand up as well. And I just wanted to note that Tito has arrived as well. OK. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just procedurally, I don't know if this is for Pat or for Mark, but since this is my first meeting um, and I was not here for the last meeting, uh, should I abstain from uh, uh, passage of the meeting notes? Or uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, if you were not there, you should abstain. OK, so uh, please note that for the record then. All right, um, and let's just uh, go through, if you will, um, Gary Johansson, could you do your introduction to our new member? Turn your sound on. There you go. Gary. Hi, my name is Gary Johansson. I'm the uh, president of the North Laguna Creek Neighborhood Association. Um, I've been a steering committee member since they started the steering committee for South Sacramento. And I'm glad to be part of this committee. All right. Thank you for your representation, Gary. Continued representation. Bishop Chris Baker, quick introduction of yourself and how long you've been serving. Hello, Steve. Bishop Chris Baker. Since day one, and I uh, do advocacy and education. And I believe we spoke before when I established sex trafficking nonprofit board right off of Chris? Power in and Third Fifth. Chris, we're getting a lot of distortion with your um, your system right now. Yes. Okay. 
So, so well, we're going to move forward because it's it's very difficult. But um, I think you have met Steve before with Power and Alliance. Um, he's quite active with a lot of the education advocacy uh, in this area as well, Steve, Bishop Chris Fisher. Uh, Rhonda you. Henderson, can we try yours? Yes, I'm on the computer now. <laughs> okay. Okay, I've been a member of the Air Quality uh, Steering Committee since it started, and I represent my um, neighborhood as the president of the North Laguna Creek Valley High. Can you hear me now? No, Chris. I so think I, you have to turn your, if you turn your camera off, it may come in clear. Sometimes the video slows down the audio. Chris, I'm going to let Rhonda finish and I'll come back to you, okay? Rhonda, go ahead. Okay, so as I was saying, I'm the president of the North Laguna Creek Valley High Community Association. And I also live in the area that um, we zoned as a designated area for the South Sacramento air quality um, reviews. And um, that's about it. Welcome, welcome, Steve. Welcome, Steve. John Rice, you're on the phone. Can you introduce yourself, please? John, please unmute yourself, if you are. And I'm asking him to unmute. There were a bunch of uh, phones and microphones unmuted. We were hearing some feedback, so I was. Uh, so the phone to unmute for John is star nine? Star six. Or is it six? Right. What it's, is it, Marina? Star six, and John, I've sent you a little box to unmute yourself. So hopefully that if you click on that, that might easily unmute you. Okay. Well, good evening. There you go, John. We can hear right. you now. All right. Good evening. I'm John Rice. I'm a senior leader at, at Dignity Health at Methodist Hospital. I've been here in Sacramento for the last 10 years. I uh, worked for Kaiser for 10 years, overseeing operations. I'm active in the community here in Elk Grove in Sacramento uh, in various roles as uh, coaches um, for Capital Christian or Bradshaw Christian um, and other um, activities within uh, Elk Grove, Sacramento. So glad to be here. I've been on the board for about a couple months now and I'm extremely honored to be here. Thank you so Thank very you. much. All right, Tito, Tito, uh, are you there? And can you introduce yourself? Hi, Pat. Hi, Tim. Um, hello. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, Tito Hoang, president of Vietnamese American Community of Sacramento. I'm also a president of the Little Saigon community. Uh, started in 2010, first and only ethnic based business designation. Um, proud to be a part of this uh, community and um, welcome everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tito. Vincent Valdez, please introduce yourself, sir. Yep, I'm Vincent Valdez, a uh, former resident of, in the community and a uh, representative of the United Latinos Environmental Justice Committee. And I am proud to say on Earth Day last Saturday, we planted, planted 50 plants in South Sacramento at an urban Yay. farm and worked on the uh, Morrison Creek cleanup uh, on, in, in the AB 617 South Sacramento community. All right. Go Vincent. Earth Day. Way, way to go, way to go, brother. Thank you so very much. And thank you for your continued championing for the community. Hian Chan, please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Hian Chan. I've been a longtime resident now of Sacramento County and um, I'm a resident of Elk Grove and an educator in, a, in the district. Um, just wanna say welcome to Steve. Uh, I started on the committee since January now. All right, very good. Thank you so very much. Mr. Jesus Cervantes, if you would please introduce yourself, make sure you unmute. Sure. Hi, Steve. Uh, my name is Jesus Cervantes, and I'm relatively new here. Same as him, I just started uh, joining this group in January, I believe, yep. a couple of months yep. ago. Um, I represent the uh, neighborhood uh, Mesa Grande, um, uh, part of the board um, panel. And uh, I'm a clinical, uh, clinical psychologist with Sacramento County. Thank you. Right. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Um, and thank you so much, Jesus. 
Um, Bill is not with us. You know him, Steve, in, in your uh, meetings. Um, I'm Patricia Shelby. We did get to meet a, and speak a bit on their onboarding. I have been with the committee as well since the uh, formation in late 2018. And uh, boy, are we getting old or what? Yeah. Whew. And um, <laughs> and we are still trying to absorb and take in information. So your um, your knowledge, your experience is very much needed. And we all feel that we are wanting to do uh, this work to improve and better the outcomes uh, at many levels for our community. But in particular, those persons and those voices that have been uh, left on the shelf or behind the table or um, not seen. Uh, and we're, we're struggling to make sure that those voices are heard as well. So I wanna thank you and welcome you, Steve. And uh, we look forward to uh, your service. All and right. Pat, so, Pat? I think yes. we have one. I think there's one more committee member. Uh, uh, Stephanie. Who? Stephanie. 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 Hi, Steve. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's so, no worries. Hi, Steve. Um, I'm Stephanie Williams. I am a longtime resident of the South Sacramento community. And so, and that is my, um, that's what I represent here on this um, uh, committee. And I believe I've been, I think it's, I'm getting close to maybe, it's been a, over a year and a half now. Yes. So I don't know what my anniversary date is, but it seems <laughs> like it's been a long time. I know it's been longer than a year, but anyway, welcome aboard, glad to have you. Thank you. And I, my apologies, Stephanie. No worries. <laughs> so bad. All right, so we're, we're moving forward um, and we are only have uh, 30 minutes or so left in this uh, portion of our, our meeting. Um, so with that, am I, am I correct? Are we uh, going to transition to Mark for the district update? Yep, you got it. So unfortunately, I'll be very quick to leave you guys time for other points. Just uh, two quick updates from the district. On a really minor note, and Vincent actually already touched upon this with his sharing. Uh, we Vincent's been a longtime member, was speaking as a resident, but he was also um, often speaking on behalf of United Latinos. With his move, uh, he has just shifted as a representative for United Latinos. So we're happy to have Vincent continuing to help uh, with all the great work he's been doing and just officially just shifting that from one reference to the next. So again, thank you, Vincent, for continuing on with that and happy to continue to have your voice here in the Voice United Latinos um, as part of this committee. Uh, the second update I wanted to provide everyone is we had talked before about being able to give uh, the broader data update this meeting. You did notice that is not on the agenda. Um, the good news is data is coming in. Uh, we're getting results from the lab. The lab results they sent us though, they double counted some of the information. So we had overlapping data. So we're working with them to get, get that data cleaned up. Uh, so when we do present, we're actually presenting an accurate number and not double counting some of the numbers in there. So hopefully we'll have that all straightened out with them shortly and be ready to update this group with more of the results at our next meeting. Okay. And then um, Mark, we've had a, a, a couple of community volunteers who were working with us specifically in the area of the um, aforementioned tag that we were, were putting together. We'll come back to that issue and, and that where we are with that um, next month, I think in more detail. But we would like to be able to have those persons who have volunteered to work with that, to look at that data, who have some knowledge and understanding to look at that data and help, uh, help us with guidance uh, as far as perhaps questions or areas uh, to help us be able to help evaluate as, as, as residents, okay? Um, Vincent, uh, uh, you and I had discussed that a little bit and, and as soon as we can get that data, we wanna be able to do that. Absolutely, and that's not a problem. As I said, right now, we just wanna make sure they're not adding you know, an apple from this pile and an apple from this pile and saying that there's two apples when there really is only that same apple, it was just on both lists. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you so very much. Um, with that, are you finished with your update, Mark? Sorry, yes. Those are just the quick district updates. Okay. Um, we have a report back from um, 
the work that our subgroup led by Rhonda Henderson had done. And Rhonda, I'll let you introduce your group and what you had worked with. Um, in your packet, you also had gotten a list of items that uh, they had spoken about and wanted some um, us to, to be able to deliberate a little bit about uh, their first uh, brush at that brainstorming. Go ahead, Rhonda, I'll let you take that. Sound? Rhonda, I need you to unmute. Uh, she can't get it unmuted. Can you, Janice or? Yeah, let me take There we go. She's All right. there. there we go. I had to, the host had to unmute me. All right. Yes. Good evening. Um, first of all, it was a pleasure to work on this committee as the lead. And I worked with um, He and Chang, Victoria Vasquez, Vincent Valdez. And we had a new member come in, um, Juan. I can't think of your whole name, Sanchez. It was a long name. I can't think of it right now. I don't know if he's here today. So we work with those people. And the purpose of, um, if you have the, um, the handout in front of you, we were supposed to come up with some ideas on how to, out, how to reach the people in the community with information about air quality as we move forward and we get information from our monitors and so forth. So we came up with quite a few ideas. And uh, Rhonda, can I have uh, uh, just a second to ask Marina, um, Jesus, did you serve with that group? Jesus Cervantes? Okay. No, um, no. Um, he, he did. Uh, Vincent, were you able to join in on the group? Vincent did. So take, uh, could you unmute Vincent? And, uh, Victoria, and Victoria Vasquez, could you and unmute and all of those members uh, who, uh, who served with the committee so that they can be able to share? All right, thank you, Rhonda. Continue. All right, there was also a gentleman named Juan. I want to say Sanchez. Juan, Juan there yeah. is that him? There he is. Juan Carlos, Carlos Garcia. Garcia. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. So um, we came up with about three pages of ideas, and I tried to categorize them because we kind of brainstorm um, from um, like categories. For instance, um, I use like a, our hand and your hands have many fingers. And that could be many ways you can contact people. So my hand gave us a jumping point to talk about, okay, how about schools? How about health, health um, administrators and so forth? So we have a, a plethora of ideas from um, the school districts, communication liaisons. That we can use their email address probably. I've used it for our association. Um, they will not give us the email address of their parents of the school, but they will send things out for us and they will put things on their newsletter. So I think we could contact the Sac City Unified or Elk Grove. I worked with Elk Grove before um, for that. We talked about um, colleges and vocational training programs and adult and community education, uh, senior, junior and elementary schools, outdoor sports. Uh, coaches and football, soccer, newsletters of, uh, that they have, senior citizens and the different places where you can reach seniors. Uh, when the bingo parlors open back up, probably there, nursing homes, senior housing complex, church, churches have motherboards and senior boards and so forth. Uh, places of worship, again, uh, uh, we listed a few, but there's probably more. We listed like um, uh, South Sacramento Christian Center, St. Charles of Borromeo, St. Luke's Presbyterian, and we can um, try to get on their bulletins and their announcements. Also neighborhood associations, uh, two of them are represented here. And we added Meadowview Neighborhood Association and Deerfield Mesa and Southampton and, and the websites of all these um, associations and along with their, um, their newsletters if they have one, we can take advantage of that. And then we wanted to reach Asian, Asian resources. So we need to kind of pan that out a little bit more. Um, parks and rec recreation, city park, Southgate, Mac Road Community Center, Casunas Community Service District, um, Chamber of Commerce, um, real estate companies to get, their, um, get them to send out information to their database contacts for us. Community organizers, such as um, 
Jackie Rose in the Meadowview area, Rabbi David, um, Mac Road Partnership, Power In Alliance. Uh, that, was that somebody's here from that? Steve, right? Yeah, Steve is okay. here. Stockton Boulevard Partnership, Florin Road. We mentioned elected officials. So that could be county supervisors like Patrick Kennedy, um, Jim, Jim Cooper as a state assembly, our city council members, Mai Vang and Rick Jennings, and the mayor of Sacramento and Elk Grove. And then SMUD, and we said hospitals. Um, we only listed two, but I'm sure there's more in our area. Uh, various surveys to diverse targeted groups, uh, social media of all kinds, um, volunteer Sacramento, phone trees, text message trees, email trees, listserv, uh, transportation industry. We've listed regional transit, light rail, e-train, e high-speed rail, transportation, transit authority, and SMART. We mentioned SAC 350, SAC Climate Coalition, Youth Environmental Groups, uh, public libraries like Southgate and Valley High, and events. Uh, when we when the pandemic is over, we can probably make ourselves available to go to the various events to share information like National Night Out, um, sporting events like marathons, Race for the Cure, etc. Public health fairs, other vendor fairs, um, events as identified, concerts in the park, uh, food truck mania, and community fundraising events. That's the end, the end of our list. So uh, what about your other uh, members? What, what were their thoughts about um, um, outreach? And uh, was there any discussion about uh, your thoughts about priority, priorities? We didn't, we didn't like get into priorities. List. We didn't get into priorities. We just, we just tried to brainstorm as many ideas that we could come up with. So if, if you want us to do that, we can meet again and then uh, try to prioritize things. What are some of those, pri um, um, yeah, so, some of those targets. What, what, um, what do other members um, think? Now we have an obligation under our um, camp, under our community air monitoring plan to outreach. And what part of what we're outreaching is trying to uh, take this data that we're getting back to, to folks. Um, but we've also had some discussion about, hey, when you talk with folks, you got to meet them where they are. Mm -hmm. right? and, um, and talking about stuff yeah, that's above yeah. their head or of no interest is, is also a concern. Do you, did you have any thoughts or, or anything uh, from any of your members about um, with that, what priorities in these COVID times? Um, well, we did talk about connecting the health concerns in the community with the uh, air quality in the community and that connection. But bridging that connection, I guess we're waiting for the data to come in still. And so we don't really have, we know there's a lot of health issues in the community, but we just don't know the air quality and how we're going to present our data yet. Okay. All right. Pat, uh, to answer your question, uh, Rana did a great job of facilitating and also being the scribe mm -hmm. of the meeting um, to produce that exhaustive list back to everyone. Um, and um, I think a few of us have that, those questions of, well, we have the communication trees or the means, or um, uh, but what are we going to survey our, our community participants about? Or is it about building awareness? Is it gauging um, you know, what air quality means to them? or um, getting a snapshot of what uh, whether there are um, health or mental health challenges that are affected by air quality. Um, I think it's uh, dependent on uh, our work in this um, committee and our group um, to help guide us what sort of information we want from the community so that we can affect change or build education. I, I, I'm completely understanding that because this is the first step. Victoria, you had a, a comment. Can you unmute yourself? Or yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, cooking dinner, so I was trying to keep it quiet earlier when you asked me to unmute Ariel, but thank you. Um, yes, exactly. Rhonda did a wonderful job at creating this extensive list, and that first step was really important, right? Who do we want to reach? But the next steps are, why do we want to reach them? What is the message you're trying to send? Is it clear? Um, you know, are we inviting them to this meeting to help make decisions? Are we informing them about what data is happening? Right. So a very clear and educated campaign, I think, is very important. 
And I had to leave that meeting in particular early because I had two other presentations that evening. But in the meantime, I have met with four other AB 617 communities in California um, through my um, Partners Advancing Climate Equity cohort. Um, and they have some really great ideas. They're showing me what they're doing. Um, a lot of the time they're taking a local nonprofit and taking all the information from the meetings into the communities and translating it into different languages and telling them what's happening, right? And breaking it down in uh, layman's terms and getting them involved that way. Um, they're offering translation services at the meetings and they are having uh, social media campaigns. So I've got a lot of intel to come back and share with the, the group once we meet again. And I would love for us to um, you know, meet again, get these answers from the steering committee Right? Like, what are we saying? And exactly as Ms. Chan said, what does they ask? Right? So that we can create this uh, more effectively. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, Juan, any comments from you? Your thoughts? Unfortunately, I was uh, not able to make it. I gave my. Uh, my contributions to the list uh, virtually via email, um, but it's, it, it looks very in depth. And from what I, what others have shared, looks like we have to develop some sort of strategy to make sure that uh, we deploy the information. Once that's gathered to deploy the information in a way that makes sense to, to community members and that engages community members. I added your contribution, Juan. I don't know if you recognize it. Yeah, yeah, I did. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> You got as it. He said, there. As he said, he couldn't make it to the meeting, but he wrote me. Um, yeah. And so I made sure that's why I was a little late getting that list, okay, because I wanted to get his input. <laughs> well, I, I, I think this is a great first start, and I think it is critical. I, I um, Victoria mentioned, um, and it would be good to get that information if you could share that um, with, with us, Victoria. Um, there's no point in us reinventing a wheel. If there are people who are doing some, have some um, great ideas yeah. going on, let's use them. I believe in stealing from the best. And so um, if, we can, if we can do that, because we do have to answer that question, why and what message are we going to deliver? Right. Yeah, so that we can, can, can do that. Um, that, will, that will determine the type of um, outreach you wanna to select too. Exactly, exactly. Um, so uh, if you are willing, uh, Rhonda, uh, it would be great if you could pull together another, um, another one of these meetings so that we could wrestle with, uh, with some of that. Okay, yes. like, pri like prioritizing what we could do now. And, and, the, and the why. And the why. Yeah. Okay. I think a big part of that is to listen to what the community wants, right? Yes. So yeah. asking, you know, letting them know what the data is and then asking them what are their ideas. Right. And and if and if that's what we're going to do, then then if that's what we want to do with our why, then that directs what kind of outreach you want to do so that you can collect what they're what they're saying. Okay. All right. Um, but if that's if that's possible, Rhonda, I would love for you to uh, uh, to host uh, again. Okay. Um, Another I just need to get more clarity on exactly what you want me to do because okay. who was that that just spoke? Was that Victoria? Yes, it was um, Victoria. She was saying, uh, um, I don't know that we can determine the the type of um, outreach we're going to use unless we know who we're trying to reach and why we're trying to reach these people. Okay, so um, I mean, we have to make that real clear first. I mean, like for, for instance, if we're trying to uh, reach the people that are getting asthma and have a high rate of asthma, we probably need to um, reach out to the hospitals, you know, for data, that type of thing. Well, someone was trying to make a statement. Uh, that was me, Pat. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, that's such a, a really great list. Um, one thing that I'm thinking about uh, bringing back to our community air monitoring plan was um, evaluating effectiveness of public outreach. And a few, um, I want to say like a year ago when we were developing the monitoring plan, the steering committee had some ideas about maybe um, uh, surveying 
Um, mm -hmm. That's on here. Yeah. Polling um, the communities, you know, kind of like where did we start? And then um, at the, you know, I don't want to say at the end of this, but as we go move through this program over time, then poll again to see right. whether or not um, the, uh, if we've increased public, uh, 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 increased public awareness. And so that might be a good starting point um, because, you know, we haven't went out to uh, the community in terms of creating um, uh, outreach yet. Um, so if we have that, you know, kind of polling started, then, then we have like a baseline data to work from as we're moving through getting the data out there. Right. That, that's a possibility. I, I really like the idea of also looking at what some of our uh, communities around the state have done effectively for pulling outreach and getting to, to folks and soliciting. Um, we certainly aren't the only ones who are stuck in a COVID bubble and have to figure out a way of uh, doing that. Recently, the um, Sacramento Native American um, health, um, I think they're called uh, co collaborative, um, put out a, a, um, a survey monkey um, uh, piece of information out to people and had a good set of questions. And a lot of those had to deal with the air quality and health. Um, so those are, those are some of the things that can discuss. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think finding out what's happening around us with our, some of those other groups may be very helpful in, in formulating the why, the why and, and even some hows to effectively uh, do it. So. Um, right, I think Vincent shared a, um, a link to um, a survey as well too. Yeah. It had yeah. some questions, so, but we didn't really go through those because we wanted to uh, find out from the steering committee, where do you want us to go from here, so. I did share the survey and the survey survey results are in and I just emailed it to everybody that was on the outreach committee. So we'll be able to look at it oh, and okay. get some idea of what asking questions of the community brings back to us rather than telling them that their error is bad. And, and so, so there's a two, there's a two way approach to it, I believe, and asking the questions from the community, I, I think we're going to get a lot of more uh, feedback mm -hmm. rather than, kind of telling them that there's pollution in the air and, you know, it's tough to breathe and all that other stuff. Right. So I think. Yeah, we, we did, we did say, we put surveys on here, but we just need to know who we're surveying and why. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. And then get some sample surveys from others so we can use what's worked, some best practices that have worked, you know, from other agencies. Right. And, and just so, for the record, that survey had a $5 gift card going for everybody who responded. And I believe it, re it was, filled up in two days. So <laughs> maybe a $5 gift card to Starbucks gets a better response. <laughs> so um, um, I don't know, uh, Adrian Rin put in, in the notes that uh, we're deploying uh, an educational curriculum before our community-based planning solutions. So um, building that shared understanding is important, he's saying. Mm -hmm. So I think getting that, get, getting that sense of that. Um, I don't know, let me ask other uh, of the steering committee and Marina, if you open up the steering committee members, mm -hmm. do you have any other comments or, or recommendation of how you would want uh, the committee to proceed? We're getting a thumbs up from Tito. Do you, I, I think we do have to struggle with the why and how and 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 what's the message and that's going to to be very important. So, I, I, can I, 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 you know, can, may I? Oh, oh, it's, I, it's, it's just it's I, 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 yes. Actually, I just want to thank you for the list of all these uh, organizations and names. It's pretty good. Uh, I just want to suggest a couple more. Um, places where probably we can add to this okay. list, if you might. No, not if at all. Mind. On number four, I will mm -hmm. add the San Rose Church. What, what was that? Can you spell that? It's you, San Rose. Potentially, other steering committee members might have additional ideas that they might want to 
add in too. Oh. So that may just be something you want to gather from other steering committee members. Oh, so, okay. Well, so, uh, yeah, we can email those if you want to. Then. Let, let's do those so that, so that she has that in a written format. Let's share that with Rhonda. Uh -huh. okay. um, in, a, in a written form, if we have um, additional um, <laughs> folks, and um, Rhonda, yes. let me let me get back with you and have that discussion because I think we may need to poll the steering committee members um, about some of these um, uh, issues as well to to help you get that direction you're seeking. Okay. So uh, just send it to me, Jesus. Okay, so he said he will. All right. And thank you so very much um, for our, um, Juan Carlos Garcia. Thank you for serving. Victoria, thank you. I hope you will continue to do. He and Vincent um, and Rhonda, um, great job. Okay. Tito had a, um, has his hand. You know, did you have a comment? Yeah, my hand is a little bit bigger than that, but I couldn't, I couldn't take a picture. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> It's okay, maybe that you didn't see it. No, I, I, I wanted to, to, to relate, you know, a wonderful um, work that, that Rhonda and the team have done. I think it wasn't so long ago where we sat down together in, a, in a, I think it was uh, Luther Burbank, when we talk about surveying, right? We talked about reporting and, yes, yes. Um, um, you know, yes. gathering information. And the question we asked, a various community organization from the students is a little different than if I were to come up to a uh, an immigrant uh, association of beauty salons who you know deal with bad air all day long, right? Mm -hmm. Based on the work that they do, it's different. And of course, there should be some in language support as well. But yet, this project has been going on for so long, and I think the questions we ask and how we ask the questions as well as follow up. Is ever so important. I think with this whole situation with COVID, that there are people who are more receptive to outside entities like us asking how they're doing, what's going on, you know, create some kind of baseline beyond mm -hmm. just their health, but also the air quality as well. So I hope that maybe I can be more active as well in in in, in, in taking to the next le level in terms of how we uh, gather these questionnaires and, and 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 allowing people to report, but also allowing us to gather. Um, data that we can really use to, to springboard to, to something really more substantive. But I, I think this project has been going on for a long time. I just need, we, I just hope we can uh, put some, uh, you know, some, some more um, uh, substance behind it because I, I think there's some effort there that's, that's really um, worth, worth considering. Uh, as well as, as uh, addressing language uh, uh, barriers that exist. Right. For our community members that we want to, um, I would, uh, um, and I'll, I'll send that to you. I was also looking at um, the Sacramento Native American Health Coalition and ILECA um, because they work a lot with um, uh, un, um, unrepresented, uh, not necessarily uh, persons who are who have health care insurance. Um, that you would find at a Kaiser or at a, a Dignity Health or at a Sutter um, with, with those as well. And that's an audience that we may be interested in speaking with. But I wanna do a time check. Um, okay, uh, yes, our time is um, on, on this issue. So I, we'll be getting back to you, but we definitely want this committee to move forward to the next, to the next phase and help us with okay. that. All right. Pat, real quick, if I may, yes. um, I know you already had a few members of the, the public who helped out in that group, but I didn't know if yes. you want to quickly see if there was anything else from anyone else on the call um, beyond the committee members, just real quick. I know we're time already, but I want to make sure we don't miss that piece. Yes, and, and that's where we want to move on to open this for uh, public comment and recommendations. Um, and uh, if you will... Um, Marina, just give people uh, a reminder as to what to do if they are wanting to make comment. And it looked like Hian had her hand up as well. Did you have? Yes, um, I, I just wanted to add, I know um, there are other members that were uh, talking about the ways we could outreach, um, reporting, educating, um, but I think it's also important to add in a listening component where there are listening sessions where we hear from our community 
um, what their concerns might be, maybe specifically related to air quality, uh, climate change, and um, just general quality of life. Um, and so that we can affect that too and get different snapshots of data, qualitative, quantitative. Um, I think that's very important. Sounds right. Okay, okay, so Maria. far, not seeing any members of the public with hands up. Yes, just as a reminder, if you want to make a public comment, uh, go ahead and raise your virtual hand. Um, you can click on the reactions button or the participant button, and both should have a raise hand option. Or you can put it in the chat. All right. Seeing none, um, and, and I can't see everything, but I'm depending on um, some of the other uh, persons monitoring that. All right, are we prepared to move forward? So Pat, I just uh, wanted to do a time check. We are about, uh, I would say 15 minutes behind. Um, uh -huh. so we have uh, a couple of um, agenda items. One is the, um, the land use and air quality uh, kind of recap that, um, that Rafe was going to do to kind of wrap up what we discussed last meeting. And then also uh, new business and future agenda topics as well as public comments. Um, so is there uh, any direction you wanna give just in terms of you know, proceed on with agenda topics? Do we want to? Um, um we, we have some critical pieces that we need to move, be able to move, uh, in my mind, to our training portion of the program. Uh, if it is all possible uh, from the district, uh, Rafe, I know that you're here and I know that you have a great presentation, but would we be able to, um, my recommendation is that we move that forward to a future agenda. Yeah, Pat, and I actually um, suggested to Mark in the chat separately that I can even just write up a memo and send it to the steering committee or, or we can post it somehow if, if need be, if there's specific questions. So we can we can delay it or, or provide information another way. So thank you. Um, I, I'd like to move it forward so that we could be able to uh, ask those questions and get re responses from you, Rafe. But, uh, and I know that you were succinct in it, but this, this discussion is important. Um, for the members to have. So with, with that, um, do I have agreement from the committee to, to move that item to a future agenda, um, which is a recap of the district's land use uh, recommendations and how we could interface with that? Any comment? Is everybody shut off? I mean, their sound all closed off. We're okay, I think. Okay. Yeah. I all right. I'm in agreement with that, Pat. This is Steve. Okay, thank you so very much. All right, um, hearing no other disagreement with that. So um, let's go ahead and move forward into our um, uh, new business and future agenda topics. Do we have any new items from members? Um, can I just make a, a follow-up Last uh, last meeting, uh, Tito, um, in the wake of the violence uh, that uh, had been going on, um, you had a very moving statement to us um, from your heart um, and concerns as to whether you could be able to balance your work on this committee and the work that you're doing for your community members in trying to deal with um, the acts of violence, the increased ever increased acts of violence uh, for the API community, Asian Pacific Islanders community. And I made a commitment to you that I would attend the rally, the car rally, um, and I did. Bishop Baker also from this committee attended um, and the rally where we had elected representatives, um, the mayors, um, our, um, our congressmen and our, um, supervisors who, who met at the rally at Florin Road and uh, working in conjunction with uh, Asian Resources um, uh, Incorporated. And I wanted to sh share with you that we had done that and um, those are critical issues that our members of our community are faced with. Um, Asian, Black, Latino, um, 
in particular uh, folks who have felt um, frightened, very, very frightened uh, with the increased levels of violence. So I thank you for bringing that forward and, um, and wanted to give you the update of what had, had ha happened with uh, that. Thank you, Pat. Thank you so much. Um, any other new items that, um, new business items? Future agenda topics, Janice, if you would. Let's touch on those. So um, future agenda item topics uh, for this, uh, for May and, and June agenda topics. Um, we have them out listed here. I mean, we, the, there is the first one um, there. I think there was a discussion that uh, after the city, city and county presentations, um, I think there was a, a discussion about, you know, uh, or, or maybe it was a comment about bringing in our elected officials to have that conversation to move things forward. Um, and so, you know, we, we put that as part of um, an agenda, a topic. Uh, continuing on is um, there's also about the air monitoring data, um, phase three location discussions. You heard a little bit from Mark about the, um, the, the, the snag that we ran into um, in terms of uh, the double counting of the data. And so we're working through that right now. Um, there's also the outreach, the subgroup report outs, um, the outreach we heard earlier this meeting that, you know, R Rhonda um, and the outreach group is going to go back and, and look at some more, you know, um, prioritization, potentially the, the who's and what's and why. Um, there's also a topic about discussing about what the next steps are, right? There's been a lot of um, discussion surrounding about what are the, some of the actions that we can take moving from an air monitoring or just, you know, Mon air monitoring to getting some of the emission reduction strategies and solutions into the community to um, to uh, reduce the emissions and uh, and surrounding that there was also a discussion about uh, potentially having a subgroup um, with that. Um, there is still a continuing topic about uh, partnership building. We've uh, heard a little bit about um, from the city and, and the county last meeting. Um, but we didn't know if there was any specific questions um, that the steering committee uh, may want the city or county to focus on. There was also, you know, uh, uh, topics such as healthcare, education, industry, transportation, um, that was a part of this uh, partnership building discussion. And then, um, and then there was also uh, uh, the Urban Heat Island presentation that was brought up a few meetings ago that continues to be on this, um, the, you know, as a realm of topics. And so I guess the, the question that um, I want to pose is, you know, what rises to the top again as we're uh, having these conversations. Um, it sounds like that Pat, you were sharing with Rafe that um, we would like for him to come back to kind of round out the air quality, uh, the land use and air quality discussion that we move from this meeting to the next meeting. Um, so I'll just stop there as uh, the potential agenda topic items. Pat, you're on mute. Are there any comments from members with, with this? Um, where, where to go. Uh, Hian, I see your hand up. Um, I believe we were polled recently um, where the results from there to see what uh, where their rankings were for next um, agenda items. Um, the land use issue actually came out uh, fairly high. Um, and then almost equal to that, Mark, was it um, the coming back with the um, data? Yeah. Data, data was a big one, yes. And, uh, and, and, and um, just below that, I believe, was the pre -SERP, what actions we need to be taking for moving forward. Yeah, so let me, um, I anticipated this question. 
Um, so let me uh, give a, a quick snapshot of that. Um, so the, the big one uh, was the data, the air monitoring data. Um, the three that were tied together was the collaborative decision-making, um, the land use decisions impacting air quality, and the, uh, the forming of the pre-SERP subgroup to explore work needed for a SERP. Um, those were the top four items and I can continue on if the group would like me to. Um, and then it was this outreach subgroup report back as well as the partnership building following those, um, the last four that I just said. And then, uh, and then lastly, um, the, the technical advisory group report back and the urban heat island presentation from the district. So oh, that's kind of where the survey left us um, with, with those. Um, are there any burning issues that you feel need to be coming um, above? And I think we are all in agreement about the data error monitoring and the uh, phase three. Vincent. Yes. Uh, so uh, I know in the past when we kind of did some of these things and we, we listed all our items, we came across uh, time frame issues on other things. So, is there anything in a time frame that we need to look at that would be that would project something up to a little more important status? Or uh, I know the SERP was something we were talking about, but I mean, it's already going to be May. So, when Vincent, was the SERP maybe, supposed to be done? So, Vincent, uh, decisions in terms of a formal SERP are actually not due until like next winter time frame um, in terms of a formal recommendation to the California Air Resources Board. Um, I think what we're probably gonna end up looking at, and we'll talk more about this when we do have this discussion item will be, you know, how do we move forward on local solutions now? You know, how do we look to start achieving reductions today um, just given everything else? Um, the timing thing that I would say would be coming up just from a straight immediate timing standpoint would be, uh, we don't wanna just give you guys the data on the air monitor data and then asking you to make a decision on the phase three location all in the same meeting. Um, you know, we think that's a good one to be able to share information, take questions, let you guys mull it over, ask additional questions and have you guys make that decision on that. So obviously that's probably the most, the next most timely one I would say is starting that process. Uh, if we do wanna continue doing sort of like a two-step process so people aren't feeling rushed uh, to be making those kind of decisions, uh, just because the phase three is then getting the, the more detailed monitoring in via the trailer into the community and doing that deeper dive. So obviously until, you, until we get to those decisions, we're not collecting that additional data. So that would probably be the most, if you're just asking from a straight timely stand one, standpoint, that's probably one of the main ones. By the same token, I think we, and I'm not advocating one way or the other, um, I think we heard that both the city and the county have some different planning decisions that are sort of in motion right now. So if there is an interest from this group of hearing from saying your city or county uh, elected officials to know how to interact with that process from their perspective and how to share that information, that is probably something that'd be fairly timely as well. But again, that's just, more my perspective there on that, Vincent, in terms of immediate uh, dates of information. Okay, so when you said the winter, that you meant winter this year, like four months away, five months away? Um, the, this last year, Carb the ended up... So, um, Karen, correct me if I'm wrong here. I know that you guys probably haven't finalized the decision yet, but I do know, for example, like this last year, they barely did their formal recommendations in January. So just two months ago. Um, did, yeah, in February, Mark. Or we're in doing, February. We're going to be doing them. Yeah, we're, we're doing them in February now. We've moved them. So Vincent, in terms of our next formal step of saying if that's a step we go or not, and we'll have more information just in terms of resources and such not, but that decision wouldn't need to be rec forwarded on to CARB until say the end of this year. So we wouldn't need to probably pass anything on to them for about eight or nine months. Ish. And Vincent, I'll keep bringing it up too. So it'll be in the fall, like in August and September, I'll start going, hey, let's talk about it. 
So between the two of us, we'll make sure. Great, thank you. We have the talk. Thank you very much. Um, any other discussion with this item? All right. With that, where does that leave us now? So now we're for general public comment. Um, if there are any members of the public who'd like to make general public comments um, to all of us, you can raise your hand by clicking on the raise hand either in participants or in reactions, or if you're on the phone, you can press star nine. Victoria Vasquez. Hi, lower my hand here, thank you. Um, I think it's a little premature to talk about the SERP without engaging the community and asking them what they want or what you know, choices that they want. And to hear you talk about, you know, it's time to engage the short-term solutions or the now solutions. I'm wondering if there's any plan to put out any requests for a proposal to the community for how they can help, what those short-term solutions could be. So I'm wondering ahead of engaging the public and asking them to come, I don't know how many members of the public are at this meeting. Um, I would like to see more, as I mentioned last time, but I'm wondering two things. One, are we going to talk about short-term solutions soon? And are we gonna put out requests for proposal to the community to do so? Those are good, que <laughs> Those are good questions, Victoria. Um, uh, my, my own uh, piece with this is, is that we do have to get in, in the pre-SERP. We need to understand what the SERP is going to take on and, and I know that I kind of had given a, given a heads up to, um, to staff and the, the question to, to um, CARB, Karen in particular, to, to, for us to get more detail because we have to engage the community. Um, we have to have a plan that is broader than just us meeting here to, to be able to have a successful SERP. That's, that's a reality. And so, um, I, we, we have to put those building blocks um, together. Um, and and we're, we're going to have to get off, um, we're gonna to have to get off of standing still to, to actual movement. And part of that, in part of that evaluation is what are the short-term things we can start to work on um, immediately um, to, to, uh, to, to impact changes in the way that we are dealing with, with air and perhaps some reductions. And then there are going to be some uh, urgency and some immediacy issues like California burning. And what do we do to help people understand how to protect themselves from um, those emergent and more frequent uh, air, um, air quality um, disasters, that's the best way I can describe it, is those air quality disasters, that's very real. How do we live in our homes? How do we, how do we, what's the proper filtering that we need to do for all of that inside? How do we, how do we protect ourselves outside? All of those, those things as well. Um, those are just some of my thoughts. What are others? Um, can we have the, the screen so we can see each other, please? Um, Vincent had made a statement, one of the most important in his mind is sharing that information, um, talking about the sensors in the community, understanding the choices and what they may want to consider based in, on real-time data. Those are part of the things that are saying, um, as well as the fire um, um, season. By the way, Pat, real quick, that was actually my response to Vincent. I don't want to be putting those words oh, in I, Vincent's I'm mouth. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Vincent, Mark, Vincent had asked about the fire seasons, yeah, and how people can use that information that we have in our sensors. Uh, how do we get that information to the schools so that students can be able to use that? Um, how do we get that information into the hands of, of, of um, coaches such as John Rice who are coaching youth groups? And what do you do with poor air quality and how do you help protect um, the kids? Those are all, you know, that goes back to the whys and the who's 
and the what's in our outreach as well. Uh, Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah, uh, Pat, you just hit on it um, about the outreach and, and just to kind of just to speak a little bit to Victoria, when we initially started talking about getting information out to the community, um, a lot of that was wrapped into the outreach. And, and so I am um, expecting and anticipating that as we um, come to some agreement on how we are going to get this information out in those target groups, that whatever arises, whether it is coming from fires, whether it, wh whatever that looks like. You talked about um, having that um, opportunities for the public to come in and to kind of talk about what they want. When we initially started talking about the outreach, all of those different um, um, categories were part of the outreach endeavor so that we could touch people on multiple levels. And so I think that we have a good, um, a good basis. We just need to put some action to it so that we can educate, so that we can get um, feedback from the community um, as well. And so those were some of the criteria um, starting out. And that has to give us some guidance as to, as to what we would put into a CERT. What does the community I mean, we're here, but, but we need to be informed by our community as to where, where this can go, where it can be most effective. And we're not gonna be able to do everything. We're going to have to be able to target whatever we do to something that's measurable and applicable. That's because we have to be able to measure success. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, it doesn't look like we have any other questions and we want to move into um, our training session. Um, so um, this is a point in time in the meeting where we're going to um, adjourn and we're gonna give ourselves about three minutes uh, to come back in, get yourself a, um, a, what a personal uh, comfort moment and then uh i'll please come back into the meeting and uh i'm going to give you three minutes okay so for the members of the public um we are welcoming you to um to drop off <laughs> as well while we go into this training uh session with the steering committee members uh thank you so much for uh for joining us tonight and we look forward to uh, having you come back in on May 25th. And we're going to stop the recording right now. Thank you.